Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, our international service on the first uh, week of Advent. Uh, that's why we have a candle here. Uh, one candle is lighted. Next week we'll have two, three. On the Christmas Sunday we'll have four. In, in Japanese service, I uh, actually this morning I started a new uh, started a Advent a Christmas uh, sermon series uh, this ser this morning, which is the. Johanna in Christmas, John's Christmas. Uh, the Christmas story is written in on uh, Matthew and Luke. Uh, so we uh, preachers and pastors preach Christmas story from uh, mostly from Matthew and Luke. Uh, of course, as a pastor, as a preacher, I, uh, I've been preaching from Matthew and Luke uh, Christmas story many times. But this year, I choose John, uh, of course, on purpose, I, and want to share how uh, John uh, explained how John uh, want us to know about Christmas. The text is John chapter 1, uh, 1 to uh, 13. The John's Christmas story is, is quite different from others. As you know, the Christmas story is very uh, is very unique and and uh, uh, narrative uh, romantic story, like the angels uh, and uh, uh, hmm, the baby in manger. You know the stars, all kind of stuff, but the John does not use all these uh, historical things. I mean, no candles, no uh, no angels, no uh, uh, shepherds, no uh, even no Mary, no Joseph. Let me read. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives life, gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the word was made through him, the word did not re recognize him. He came to that which was his own. He came to that which his, uh, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who receive, uh, believe in him in his name, he gave the right to become 
children of God, children born not of natural descendant, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Amen. Uh, does anyone reduce this microphone's volume a little bit low? Nobody is there. <laughs> uh, uh, I think this is one. This is one. Oh, no, two, two. One, two, one, two. Thank you. Uh, too low? A little bit high. One, uh, uh, uh. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this morning I preached from verse 1 in Japanese service and especially I uh, used Greek to explain what John wants to uh, one has to know about Jesus uh, Jesus Christ before he was incarnated uh, John said, in the beginning was the Word. In, this, in the beginning is not, shows the start point of something. In Greek, en arche means before something was started. Which means before the time started. Before the whole universe was created. En arche, en ho logos. Ho logos is the word. But uh, the logos is the technical term used in uh, Greek philosophy. And the word means like the principle of this universe. John used, uh, used this term, logos, and he put the before Logos. This the, in, in Greek, uh, the has gender. Male, neuter, and, and female. And this the has male meaning, which means uh, Logos is a person. So John said, the principle of the universe, this guy was before the time was started. Actually, uh, in, in English it was, but in Greek, this is not just something happened in the past. This is imperfect tense, which means it happened, happened past, but still going. It's not finished yet. Which means the Logos was there before the time started, and still he's here. And the next sentence says, the word was with God. In English, with God, but in Greek, to God. To God. To God means the Logos was not just be with God, not side by side. To or toward means face to face. So which, which uh, probably John wants to say that the Logos is not just be with God. Logos is united with God. Face to face. It's the one oneness. And the, the, the third sentence says, the word was God. The word was God. But in Greek says, God was the Logos. That is Greek uh, sentence. Theos and Hologos. God was the Logos. Which means, not just Logos was God, but
But Logos himself is the God. Nobody, nobody. He is the God. And verse 3, John said, He, uh, through him all things were made. Through him all things were made. The Logos, all things were made through Logos. And without him, nothing was made that has been made. Without him, nothing was made. Without him, without the Logos, nothing was being, uh, was made. Without him, apart from him, nothing is existed. So the Logos is the creator, and he control everything. Because he is there, we are here. Because he is alive, everything is being existed. So John declares in the first sentences, Jesus, uh, the Jesus Christ before he was incarnated, he was God. Of course he is the God, he is the creator. Of course he is the creator. And verse five, I don't know, verse four, in him was life, and that, the, that, and that life was the light of men. In him, the Logos, there was life. There are two Greek words means life. One is pushke, another one is zoe. Pushke is like the life we have now. When we die, Pushke is gone. But Zoe is the eternal life. In this ver verse, John used Zoe. The Logos in him, in the Logos, was Zoe. Because he's the creator. He's the only one who has Zoe. We have Pushke. But our fushke will be gone when we die. But the Logos, the Creator, has Zoe. And that life was the light of man. Yes. Zoe is only the light, only hope for our, for us, for, uh, because we have only pushke. With that Zoe, we're gone. We are out. We'll be finished. Only the Creator, the Logos, has Zoe, true life, everlasting life. And he, the life itself is the light. That's why we put the candle on Christmas. This is the symbol of Jesus Christ. This is the light. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Darkness, we, the human beings, this word, didn't understood. And going to, uh, let's go down to eight. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. Verse 9. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Verse 9 is the declaration of Christmas, of John. This light, this true light, was coming into the world. John does not say he was born. He said, coming into the world. Of course, he became flesh. He used Mary and Joseph. 
you use the other kind of fancy stuff. But he, uh, John, does not want uh, the image uh, of God. You know, Jesus was God the Creator, and he. If he explained all these uh, Matthew and Luke and uh, Christmas story, it's kind of um, you know mixed up. So he he tells the straight. This true light came into the world, like the Jesus was appeared suddenly. Thing. Verse ten. He was in the world. And though the word was made through him, the word did not recognize him. This is mystery. The creator came to his world. Creator came to his world. But the world did not recognize him. Who he is. Who is this guy? Wow, just a guy from Nazareth. He's a, just a carpenter. Or, oh, maybe, maybe he did something good and great. He speaks great, but no, oh, he's not a creator or something. They did not recognize. Okay. Because Jesus is just a, a human outfit, right? Doesn't look like different. He has four hands or ten eyes or you know uh, all, all uh, like uh, full of glory nobody can see. No, just a normal man. So they could not recognize him. But read verse 11. This is very shocking sentence. He came to that which he was on. He came to that he which he was on. He just not create. This whole universe is his own thing. His work. His belongings. His He's the owner. Like the, uh, the owner of the company visit his own company. And nobody recognizes the owner. He came to that which was born, but his own did not receive him. Not just rec did not recognize, but did not receive him. Did not receive him, which means the owner came to the, the company's building and the security said, go, go, go away. You, you're not allowed to this coming to this building. The owner said, yeah? You don't know me? I'm this owner of this company. I created this company. I pay you. I give you everything. And you do not receive me. If you are this owner, what do you feel? Do you want to still hire this uh, security man? Or do you want to keep all these uh, workers? No, I don't think so. If I are that owner, I'll, I'll fire them all. Fire them all and hire the new one. Who recognize me? Who receive me as the owner of this company, right? But it happened when Jesus came. When the Logos came to this world, the people did not receive him. Right? Who who did not re receive him? Innkeepers. Innkeepers. They says there's no room. 
Pharisees and Sadducees did not receive. And King Herod tried to kill him. Tried to kill the owner, King Herod. One of his disciples rejected him. Judah. And finally, the crowd, the people, rejected Jesus. They tried to save Jesus? No, they tried to save Barnabas. Barabbas, not Barnabas, Barabbas. And he tried to kill. Which means they, did, they, just, they just did not, uh, they did not uh, receive him. Not just reject, but they killed Jesus Christ. They killed, which means the owner visited his own company and the workers came out and kill the owner. You know that story, right? Jesus tell the uh, parable, exactly the same parable. The owner of the land, the farmer. Yes. The word which, uh, which uh, the word is not far away from us. The word is we. We are part of the word. We used to, or still, reject him. He's the owner. He's the creator. Without him, we cannot be existed. Without him, we are not here. But the Jesus, the Logos, came to us and knocked to our heart. Hey, I'm here. And we say, I don't know you. Who are you? He came to which uh, he came to that which was owned, but his own did not receive him. So, what he did, what the owner did, what the, the logos did to the people who did not receive. Read the next sentence. Read the next verse. You'll be shocked. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in him, believed in him, he gave the right to become children of God. This is the grace. This is the love of God. We all rejected him. We did not receive him. But yet, however, to all who received him, not so many, but all, he all who received him, those who believe in his name, just believe in his name. No condition. Is there any conditions in this sentence? We have to uh, donate uh, one million and a year or uh, give your life 100% to God or uh, throughout your uh, belongings to uh, the God and give to the, the poor. Okay, you uh, could be the, the children of God. No. You just said, believe in His name. Yeah. Yes, I can, I can believe in Him. His name. Easy. 
just believing in his name what is the present from God what is the Christmas present from God what is the present to become children of God are we worthy to become a children of God do you think you are worthy no can God introduce me to the devils hey guys this is my son devil said laughing <laughs> Oh, your son's a sore idiot. Uh, you're not, you're, you're, your son is not good. But God said, no, this is my loving God, loving boy, loving girl. This is the present. And the children, become children of God, includes everything. Includes everything. We do not, we cannot put anything in addition to becoming the, the children of God. For your own, only, you, your own daughters or uh, uh, sons, you do everything, right? You give everything. You can do everything. Even you can answer the phone call from midnight if you call from your son or daughter. I don't know about the others. This is a part of laughing. <laughs> no. But we can do anything for our own children, right? Yeah. Because this love comes from our true father and true mother, God. We did not receive him. We rejected him. We did re not recognize him. We say no to Jesus. But if we change our mind, if we say yes to Jesus, if we receive him as our savior, God give us the best. Which means we did the worst to God, but God gives to us the best. This is the story of Christmas. This is the point of John's Christmas. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descendant, nor of human decision or our husband's will, but born of God. Born of God. We could be born of God, God's belonging, God's son, God's daughter. We got the eternal life with God, Zoe. That is the reason why the Logos become a human being, become flesh. Not to judge us, but to save us. That is his plan. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we still cannot believe in this story, Lord. The creator of this universe, the God himself, he's the only one who has Zoe, came to this word. And the word did not recognize you, did not receive you, but you did not punish this word. On the contrary, you give us wonderful present. Who believe in Him, who believe in Logos as a personal Savior. You give us the right to become the children of God. 
Lord, this is too good. You're so wonderful, Lord. This is amazing, amazing grace, Lord. Lord, but we know that many fellows, many people, are still in darkness. They don't know this true light. They do not receive this true light. Lord, we need your help. Holy Spirit can only open the heart of the people. Lord, use us to show, to give this true light to the neighbors and family and co-workers in this Christmas season, Lord. And then we can give them a true Christmas present. Not the cake, not the toys, but the true present to the people we wanted to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, this is it uh, for this, the first Advent Sunday. So we're looking forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.